Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna hide myself or else I'll die. <sighs> okay. Alright. Okay. My lip hurts so bad. Fussing with all of this. Samantha Summers, we are playing more Friends Sim. More. Let's get started. We are going to be friending the sexy giant haired clown. Let's find there. Look at his sexy smile. So beautiful. Okay. You crash landed on Alternia 16 long episodes ago. And sometimes, you feel like you've been here forever. You've had many adventures and met many Alternians, some all none of whom have become your friends. But now, for some reason, 
you have a hunch that you're near the end of your Arcturian travels. For one thing, you seem to be coming to the edge of the populated region you've been walking through all the time that you've been here. For another, the intense craving that has animated you through, throughout your journey feels like it might be waning. It's not quite gone, but it's like a, like a diner who stuffed himself to bursting but is still seeking that last sweet morsel that will make his meal complete. You're still on the prowl for that very sweet morsel of friendship. Okay. Look at all of his hair. Just my goodness. His clown, clown, ooh, ooh coming out there. You find yourself ambling down the road without any particular destination in mind. It seems like you don't have to do much active searching to land yourself in a varying combinations of adventure and or disaster. Where will the vicissitudes of fate lead you next? Who knows? You walk for a while like that. You've just about lost all hope of running into wacky contravents. When your palm husk lights up with the delightful and or foreboding sound of friendship, someone is calling you. You're less excited to see that that person who happens to be calling you is Zebra. <sighs> it's not that you dislike Zebra. Yeah, I dislike Zebra. Precisely, it's just that you might struggle to rank him above literally any other troll you've met, including the yellow guy who loves genocide. But you're not one to leave a friend hanging. I mean, you could. No one would blame you. I just wanted to befriend a clown. What is this? You dutifully answer the call. Ah, my good friend, you picked up. Awful quickly, I might add. Ha ha ha. Yeah. You just love friendship. You ask Zebra why he's calling. Do I need a reason to call? Is the thrill of dialecti di dialectical repose not enough to make social contact with one of my dearest adversaries slash friend or maybe more depending on whatever you feel comfortable with and are interested in at any given point in time. You have no idea how to respond to that. Ha! No, I'm just messing with you. I stand to incur material gain from your association. Oh. That makes sense. Okay. I need you to stay right where you are. Well, what are you gonna do? Hang up? Yes, you could. Anyone, anyone would do the same. Literally anyone. You stand right where you are and stay on the line. You ask Zebra, you ask what Zebra is up to. But he won't say. Tells you he needs to concentrate. Eventually, you notice a strange shape revolving in the distance down the road, drawing nearer slowly but steadily. After a while longer of waiting, the figure in that distance grows close enough for you to tell that it's Zebra. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> oh, that's you, you say. It looks like he's riding on some kind of incredibly cursed hover segue. <laughs> yes, I'm coming, sweetie! You would say it takes maybe 15 minutes or so for him to make it the entire way over on his hover scooter. There you are! Impressed by my new ride? No. Oh yeah, you say? You're very impressed. I knew you would be. I brought it out because tonight is a very special night. Or it will be. If you would be so kind as to make me the happiest troll in Antonia. I am not marrying him. That would be the worst decision ever. Is he like proposing to you? What? Never mind. You ask him what 
what he's vague blogging about. What indeed? The real question is, of what is, what are you doing this evening? Well, it's not like you've ever had any plans to do besides basically stupidly bumble into one ludicrous boondoggle after another. Seems like whatever he's alluding to inviting you to probably fits the bill for being included in your long itinerary of unspecified, stupid stuff you are bound to get embroiled in anyway. Fantastic! Well, it just so happens that I managed to get my hands on two tickets to Clown Fest. And I thought, who better to take along than my dearest alien associate of unspecified nature? You have no idea what Clown Fest is, but it's not off to a good start with the name. Oh, I should have known you wouldn't be familiar with it. It's a little sophisticated for an off-world reprobate such as yourself. Hold on. You're on thin ice, boy. It's a music festival centered around purple blood performers. Now normally I wouldn't trifle with the high blood entertainment, disgustingly oppressive as it is. But when you think about it, aren't clowns the most disprivileged class of them all? You don't ask him to explain what he means by that because everyone would be really angry reading it. Here's your reminder from your chart. Don't take orders from robots. Here's a reminder from your chart. Sweep the floors. I'll do it later. Rude. I would love, love to find something else to do that sounds less awful. But, I want that clown. I want that fresh clown friendship. Do you feel me? Okay. So, we are going to agree to toss our moral, meaty moral body into a clown pit to get marched to death or whatever. I knew you'd be there for me. Alright, let's go. Zebra invites you to hop on the back of a scooter so you can head out to Clown Fest. You say you're not sure this is the most effective avenue of locomotion. Zebra tells you it's all the rage and not to be a little baby about it. Oh, he's vibrating. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that. about our plans for tonight. It feels like the scooter is going even slower than it was when he arrived. Now that it's struggling under the weight of two people. You see, my favorite rhyme juggler on the planet is going to be there tonight. His name is Marvis Zoloto. You might have heard of him. He's pretty famous. You say you've never heard of him because you're an alien. Oh right. Well, he's only the best on all of Alternia. He came up a few sweeps back when he won first place on Slam or Get Cold. Oh, please tell me you know about Slam or Get Cold. You do not know about Slam or Get Cold. Well, it's a bi-sleepily reality program where aspiring Slam poets compete to prove who has what it takes. It's really cutthroat stuff. I mean, I think there are at least five decapitations a season. The competition is about skill. No matter the blood color of who's competing, the troll who wins is the troll who has the nastiest flow and the dopest bars. Everyone has an equal shot. I mean, sure, a high blood has one every season today. 
But it's basically biology that clowns are better at rhyming than everyone else. Even if high bloods were low bloods, that would still be true. That's equality. Yeah, makes sense. You think this is really progressive stuff he's saying? Where could he have possibly gotten so educated and smart? <sighs> oh, you flatter me. Anyway, as you know, I am deeply connected in the music industry. But, because of oppressive chemospectrum systems, I'm afraid I'm only truly afforded downward mobility. The clown sphere is really insular, close-knit community. But with the right hustle, I'm going to break that glass ceiling. Marvis is a perfect troll to bring me into the fold. You say this guy sounds pretty brutal. Are you sure you actually want to meet this clown? What, Marvis? Ha! I mean, sure, he does what he needs to survive in a rigidly ossified power system that could never be truly dismantled by the actions of a single individual. But that doesn't mean he supports it. Contrary to what you might think, Marvis is a, is a spectacularly subversive figure in the industry. If you listen to his music, really listen, you'll hear some borderline revolutionary stuff. I think he'd tear it all down if he could. I might have mentioned it, but being a clown is kind of woke. That's why I always want to probe that think pan of his, really get to the bottom of his radical praxis, and help spread his message of social reform to the masses. you're going to help me do it. I don't think I'm prepared for this level of friendship. Clown. The clown. The clown's got a lot going for him. But I just don't know if it's worth this. This. After four hours of scooting and one excruciatingly detailed unbroken account of the events of the past three seasons of Slammer Get Cold, you arrive at Clown Fest. Oh! I like it. It's so neon. A guy juggling hot dogs is amazing. So cool. I'd hire him for a party. Clown Fest feels more like a circus than your idea of a music festival. That makes sense. They're clowns. So. In the distance is a wide open field dotted with disorganized masses of people all gathered before the nightmare stage you presume to be the site of the evening's main event. The entrance to the festival grounds opens up into something like a parking lot, filled with whimsical tents and people selling various snacks and refreshments. You see a clown juggling what looks like at least seven hot dogs. Absolutely ghoulish. You're, f <laughs> You're glad Demian isn't here to see this. Yeah, well, he's dead, so. <laughs> It can't be. Sabra brings you up to the gates, flashes your tickets, and gets you wristbanded and admitted to the festival grounds. Seems like there's still some time before the performance is slated to start. There are some spectators already gathered in the field, but those of the more privileged blood cast are lined around the tents in the lot to buy food and merchandise. While you walk around the festival grounds, you ask Zebra what exactly he has planned. What could you possibly do to get him in good with the clowns? Zebra takes it as an invitation to whisper conspiratorially in your ear. Ugh. His breath is hot and heavy against your ear canal. It cannot get worse than this. It just can't, can it? Oh, hi. Here's the plan, my sweet little rush drop. My blood isn't even rust colored. We get it. 
wait for the show to start. And then, when Marvis comes onto the stage, really gets into his act, you're going to jump the barricade and rush the stage. Or at least you're going to try. Of course, I'm going to stop you. I'll tack you, tackle you before you even make it to the stage. And I'll call you right in front of Marvis and everybody. What? Um. Oh, calm down. I'm trying to tear down the stereotypes that low bloods are all simple minded dullards. And you aren't doing your, your people any favors by reinforcing the cause for prejudice. Obviously, I'm not really going to kill you. You'll simply pretend to play dead after I've heroically foiled your black designs on Marvis. My actions will firmly place me within Marvis's ashen quadrant, so he'll have no choice but to recognize me. And then, the clowns will see what a hero I am, and praise me, and bring me backstage to reward me. It's really a flawless plan, my dear. If you just do what you're told, nothing will go wrong. That sounds like something will go wrong. In fact, that sounds like everything will go wrong. <laughs> I don't trust the stinky word that comes out of your mouth. <laughs> Before you can proffer any critique of this caper, the jovial clamor of chattering and revelry resounding surrounding you is pierced by a rising chorus of blood-curdling shrieks. You whip around to ascern the source of the dreadful sound, but it becomes quickly apparent that those were not screams of pain at all. You know what's up when, when Zebra joins in with the ear-splitting squeals. That's him! Wow, you are fangirling whore. Under that bow tie is nice. I gotta say it's nice. Nice. Noise. It's the man of the hour himself. An expensively dressed gentle is making his way through the crowd, flanked by a robust team of hulking indigo bloods. Every aspect of him telegraphs unimaginable celebrity, the purposefully disheveled yet fashionable fit of his clothes, the swagger of his step, the ten-man camera crew trailing behind him. Just make it your way. He walks with a measure, with a measured poise despite the chaos rising around him. Dozens and dozens of young trolls are flinging themselves at his entourage without any apparent concern for their safety. The bodyguards are round kicking the eager teens into the ground left and right like a oh, oh, oh like a bloody blender of adolescent aliens it's pure carnage he really knows how to draw a crowd doesn't he sigh a minute ago it was tough to truly grasp the hype but after seeing him in person you don't know what it is but this swaggy clown has an undeniable gravitas that commands the attention of everyone around him. It's impossible to look anywhere else. Even the alternative moonlight seems to endeavor to glint off his golden accoutrements twice as bright. But he's gone just as quickly as he arrived up to the festival stage to set up his act. He leaves a bloody void in his wake. on the balls of his feet following the encounter. He clearly can't wait to get up into the pit. And to be honest, neither can you. What is it about a good clown is so utterly irresistible? Zebra takes you up to the field spread out before the stage. There are thousands and thousands of trolls already standing around, ready for the show to start. From the looks of the crowd and the back breaking down their tents, there must have been rough rust bloods camping out for days to secure their spots. But even those hard work, but even those hard won locations are much further to the back than where Zebra is leading you. There aren't many high bloods here by comparison, so Zebra is able to take you to walk right in. 
muscle past all the ceruleans and grab a spot by the barricade with maybe five minutes to spare before the show starts. There's some roadies up on the stage now dashing around to finalize all the equipment arrangements. Oh shoot. Did you remember to bring your concert diaper? Excuse you? What? Piper turns to you with wide eyes. You're awful close together now, boxed in by the swell of trolls pushing your bodies closer and closer to the stage. You know your concert diaper. You don't actually know. You don't have a single clue about your concert diaper. You ask him if he's wearing his concert diaper. He pats the front of his pants, which you notice are looking a bit plumper than usual. Um, of course. You can't just come to one of these things without your concert diaper. Things in the pit can get pretty intense, bro. You can't leave to use the low gap where after it starts. Man, you're really going to regret not bringing your concert diaper. Yeah, cause I had any, any foreknowledge of this current event that I would need a specific, odd, disgusting item for. <laughs> oh, I hate you. And so is everyone around us. Ugh. Maybe you should have brought one for me because you're the one that picked me up and wants me to trudge out into the wilderness and die in front of a clown, were you? Before you can even attempt to formulate a response to that, the crowd breaks into thunderous cheering. Your heart skips a beat as you look up, but of course the clown who's clamoring up to the center stage isn't him. Marvis is clearly too hot to blow on the first act. All the same, people are really fired up over this ra raggedy juggalo. He seems like a ser serviceable clown, you suppose. He's got enough gold chains and is reasonably swaggy. He gets bumping and drops a few bars. It's fine, you guess. But he's not your clown. You know the moment you laid eyes on Marvis that he was the only clown your heart would ever be able to see again. I think Kuroko's gonna be pretty sad. Sever leans into your ear and has to yell to be heard over the sounds of the music and the crowd. <laughs> I've never much liked raps, but up, up Slamzy's work, to be honest. Sure, the beats are produced well, but he has a very insipid sense of lyricism. Trizza's claim this. Trizza's in, indefatigable military might that. We get it, you want to harpoon the Harris. Who doesn't, honestly? We don't need to hear about it all day. Solid like 15 minutes of mildly provocative slams later, and old Slam Z is slinking off backstage. As soon as he's gone, a new jester takes the floor. If you wanted to get into the music, it proves difficult. This guy. <sighs> Every new act, they bring on to the stage is immediately followed by a hollering earful of Zebra's scathing critiques. You wonder why he's so fixated on getting in good with the gaggle of urban foresters if he thinks so little of their technical and artistic merits to begin with. As you stand, leaned sweatily against the barricade, you're starting to wonder if it's all worth it. Could the sight of a single rapping man really outweigh all the physical and psych psychic agony of waiting and standing and stewing in the heat of the pit? Will you have just endured nearly 3,000 words of hanging out with Zebra for something that will ultimately let you down? Girl, that's what I said. But, as the penultimate clown trundles off the set, the taste of the air changes, the lights on the stage go dark, and the booming sound system goes quiet, and a tremulous hush falls over the crowd. You feel your heart stop in that silence. You know down to your bones that this is the moment you've been waiting for. Hey, pretty! From sea dweller to rust blood, nobody moves. The sound of his light footsteps against the darkened stage could only be audible to someone as close as you. The anticipation swallows you whole. Oh. 
the floodlights snap back on and illuminate his astounding figure center stage, you feel it. Though yet a modest actor, the lanky juggalo has the presence of a man a million feet tall. He really is a power, the likes of which you've never felt before. You feel him inside of you, intimately, religiously, indebitably. Yes, this is it. This is your clown. And he opens his mouth to utter what feels like your most important words you've ever heard in your life. Hey. <laughs> All hell breaks loose. Everyone is screaming around you. You grip tight on the barricade as you stare up at him, glowing, mess messianic, arms outstretched to zinc drink in the zealous fever of the crowd, all incited by a single, incredibly powerful word. Hey, you'll never forget it. What up, guys? Lol. You jugs ready to cook? You can't help it. You start screaming, you're so ready. Lol, these buddies be baking beans. And y'all forget your concert diapers. It's rank out here. You feel racked by shame. Okay, but can we appreciate the side boob shape form? The side boob form going on down there? Kind of fab. How could you forget your concert diaper? You'll never be so foolish again. But it's I. I'm a freshen things up, you hear me? Zephyr takes hold of your hand and squeezes it tight. You appreciate the gesture. You understand. You feel deeply, utterly devastated to know how far out of your grasp he is. Why would a man like that ever even look at you? There's no way someone so tremendous so magnificent, so extravagant, would waste his time offering his friendship to someone as insignificant as you. But, a desol as desolating as that feeling may be, you aren't ready to put him out of your life just yet. Maybe there are other ways you can be close to him. Listen to his music. Follow him wherever he goes. Dedicate your life to him. You want to know everything about him that you can. Maybe in this way you can honor him, befriend him in your own heart, not, if not in his. Is the love one-sided any less beautiful? When the music at last starts to blast through the speakers, you ascend. The pain in your legs and your back disappears. You feel nothing but streaming euphoria. You thank the forces of serendipity for guiding you to the glorious epiphany of this beatific, beatific singularity. The show's nothing to scoff at either. You, a highly discerning individual, known to frequently make posts online regarding the quality of rap, and whether or not those who purport to possess such ability do in fact have the requires, requires, requisite bars, are fully blown away by the act. It's some really good stuff. He's just really going in hard and hot with these raps. Not the intensity and the soul barometric of the quality are hip hop. The fire that Marvis is dropping is a broad contemporary performance that would equally satisfy any aficionado of any revelant subgenre. Not a single thing about him is even slightly racist. <laughs> but you are. Every single thing about you is. You're really starting to get into the zone when Zebra starts to scream in your ear again. You were already going deaf from the concert as it was. I think it's about time to get this show on the road, don't you? Uh, no. No, that's not even a choice. No. Are you kidding? You say there's no way you're going to vault over that barricade and try to make an attempt on Marvis's life, fake or not. For one thing, the plan is stupid, and you'd immediately die. Second of all, Marvis is a beautiful artist of the soul of a true poet, and you're not going to help anyone attempt to exploit his celebrity for selfish purposes. You can you conclusively inform Zebra that he'll have to find someone else to help him hoodwink sweet Marvis. What's that? I can't hear you over all the incredibly vicious and beautiful rapping. 
You tell Zebra that you are not doing it. You just want to listen to the rest of the concert and enjoy yourself. Zebra seems horribly taken aback. What? But I thought we were friends. <laughs> you reassure Zebra that you are friends. No. But affirming a friendship doesn't necessarily require one to embark on a ludicrous suicide pack in order to socially hoodwoggle a rhythmically gifted Marion. Marion Drew. You're hardly Thelma and Louise. Get real. <laughs> oh. You tell Zebra he needs to find someone else to help him cozy up to the clown's inner circle. He literally left already. Zebra harumphs, offended, and decides to go. He starts to push away through the crowd down the length of the barricade. And with that, you're free to turn your gaze back to his mirthful eminence and embrace the new piece you have found in his artwork. Why did it get dark? But Marvis only keeps distributing dope, dis distributing dope, and the crowd only gets rowdier. Before you know it, you find yourself being wrenched into the writhing mass, jostled about and subsumed by the transcendent power of the music. There is no way. There is no way this is the bad ending. No way. Your pitiful little body becomes nothing but a note in his wicked symphony, a raindrop washed away in the rapids. Some time ago, you might have accepted your fate here and allowed yourself to be trampled by the mob, but you have got something to live for now. Like literally anything. Anything. Even as you feel yourself begin to physically break, those sick beats tether you spiritually to the mortal world. His ruthless bars cut through the heat and the sweat and the heavy stench of uh, drawing you like a sailor to the siren song. Not even death could wrench you free of his grasp. In spite of the odds, you manage to muscle your way back up to the floor. You exit the mosh pit of a shattered mess. Bruised, battered, and broken, hanging on, hanging on only by the most tenuous of threads. As you look around you, you get a glimpse of your fate. You're surrounded on all sides by trolls who have collapsed and been trampled dead. Faces frozen in rictus, in a rictus of ecstasy. Given how lightheaded you feel, you aren't long for this world either. But you can carry on a bit further. For him. Wow, he's really something else, that Marvis. You think, as your wasted body slumps against the barricade. It's all you can do to lift your weak head and stare up at him, drinking up his boundless audio-visual wonders of... As your vision starts to blur and your consciousness begins to fade. You jerk back to your senses when you feel something splashing over your face. I'm just gonna, yeah, keep going. You cast around wildly for the source of the water. To your disbelief, you see that it was Marvis. He's standing at the edge of the stage, gyrating his hips to the choreography as he looks down at you in concern. It's like staring into the groin of an angel. He waits for a break in his verse to cover his mic and mouth to you. Yo, buddy, you, I, you can't believe how gracious he is. 
to see a humble fan such as yourself in pain, and to stop to make sure you're okay. Is this real, or have you passed on to heaven after all? Yo, but like, he doesn't care about any of the other people who are just trampled to death. Confused. Your gaze tracks up from his well-proportioned crotch to the generous view offered by the plunging neckline of his shirt. Girl, I've been saying that. He's got some nice clown shapes. You're all right now. You've never been more right in your life. Marvis jumps off the stage into that impassable purgatory that separates it from the pit, the gods from the mortals, and makes his way over to you. He stretches out his hands. Hey, babe. Wanna dance? Your broken bones are no obstacles. Instinct propels you over the barricade and into his arms. He catches you like you've both been waiting your entire lives for this moment, like you've never felt more warm or safe. He scoops you up with his incredible strength and carries you back onto the stage. Marcus is talking into his mic again, so his words reverberate through the entire field. Look what we got here! Seems like a low blood cut to the front of the line, my friends, lol. The remainder of the crowd that's still conscious boos viciously. What? What's happening? Oh, you're clearly bleeding red from being stomped in the face several times in the mosh pit. And in the murky light of the sage, it looks awful burgundy. <laughs> Someone's been naughty. With that face, it's you. Yes, yes, you've been so naughty, you say into the mic. No remorse. For shame. The crowd jeers. Well, we clearly got a criminal on our hands. What do you think we should do with him? Any opinions? The response is disjointed, but still functionally unanim unanimous. Amidst the clamor, one word keeps ringing out clearly. Kill! 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 Wow, y'all want me to kill him? <laughs> That's brutal. Well, I ain't one to let down my fans, you hear me? Justice be done, my merry men! What way to better what better way to cap off a wicked night than with a little gutter blood show? LOL. Well, you're hardly qualified to question Marvis's judgment. If what he wants is to pub publicly execute you in front of a crowd of his adoring fans, you guess that's how it has to be. You surrender completely as Marvis directs the stage hands to help him erect some sort of makeshift crucifix. You don't struggle as he carries you over and ties you up, suspended above the crowd. This is not dancing. All the spotlights shining, you burning hot, the audience's rapturous screams deafen you. But all you can see is Marvis approaching you, bringing in otherworldly light. His back is to the crowd, so you're the only one who can see his face like this, intense, focused, merciless. A gaze meant only for you. You never felt more special. He steps up before you face to face. You stare into his eyes, enthralled. Such clear eyes, so potent and beautiful. Your only regret is that you can't gaze into them for longer. I appreciate that. Beautiful and functional. I appreciate that. Yeah. Marvis takes hold of his cane and in a fluid motion draws it out in rape out its rapier. Marvis takes hold of his cane and in a fluid motion draws out its rapier sharp hidden blade. The metal glints a thousand colors in the light of the stage. Almost as awesome as he is, you hope you you hope he strikes true. Yours will be a magnificent death. But then he winks. A fleeting moment of understanding passes between you. Could it be that Marvis is the friend you've been searching for after all? Oh, is it a fool's flight of fancy to dream so? He 
he draws in close, rearing up, rearing up as if to strike, and as he raises his blade, his jacket lifts up too, exposing his vulnerable clown pitch. If you leaned in just now, just maybe you could... <sighs> I don't think this is the right choice, but... I just... I just have to, right? I just, I have to, right? Like, I physically have to, right? There's no way I could, I could not go ahead and do this. Oh no. You can't help yourself. You lean right into the clown's swampy armpit and breathe in deep. He is going to kill me so hard. The scent is like nothing you've ever smelled before. It's like the flip. It's like the thick flavor of ambrosia glazed over an ogre's mask. Wet teriyaki socks sprinkled with a seasoning of pure passion. Powerful, indomitable, and beyond intoxicating. You can't get enough. You sniff and then you snuff. Sucking in as much of the hot, salty odor that your nostrils can at, into your nostrils as possible. So delicious. The fresh bouquet of exertion brought about by hard, relentless work, freely flowing as a manifestation of his raw talent. You could spend the rest of your life nestled into this jester's fragrant pit, which might be literally what happens. You hope he allows you the indulgence. He's gonna kill me. Were you so bold? He might even take a hearty lick. Why? Oh, how could it possibly taste? If the smell alone is so wonderful. What? Would that you could sn suckle? Even a single drop, drop of that jester's hunky tang. You imagine some poor what? <laughs> Why? Why would I do this? <laughs> oh, why would I do this? do this to myself. You imagine some poor Let's Player having to read every delectable sentence of these odiferous paragraphs aloud and get a little hot and bothered. <laughs> uh, I did this to myself. This, this is all me. But you aren't quite that brave. <laughs> Either. Marvis brings down the blade. It seems sinks deep into the wood beside your neck. That was no accident. A jester so powerful surely would not miss. I am so surprised that he did not decide to kill me. If somehow this is the good ending, I will, I don't know, eat my salt lamp. I'm gonna eat this tiny friggin' salt lamp right here. This. Right here. I will eat this. I'm gonna be eating a salt lamp.
I don't even know how I'd manage to do that, but I don't know. It's gonna happen. Okay. He's sparing your life. You're so humble that your bladder of on the spot, your urine is hot, your legs, Marvis's gaze is on your face. You really wish that you thought to bring your concert diaper. Marvis gives you a look, then glances pointedly to his cane sword. You take the hint and make an exaggerated reaction, like you've just been stabbed for real. You grab at your neck. Wasn't I tied to a stick? You sputtering and flailing. The high blows right in front. Can tell you haven't really been stabbed, and they're a little disappointed. But it's not as clear to the trolls further back. Somewhere around the mass of teal bloods, the illusion really hits home. They start going bonkers back there. That wave travels to the burgundies, then ricochets back home to the high bloods. You crack one eye open as you play dead. This time, it's nothing like the controlled moshing during the performance. This is pure anarchy, a whirlwind of death and brutality. Trolls are at each other's throats, literally ripping each other apart with like fang at claw. All the blood spraying into the air really makes the humidity skyrocket. That's disgusting. At some point, when the racket becomes less than melodic, the clowns all come out for a final encore to drown out the sound of the screaming. They start wrapping up a real storm. After about 45 seconds, a full two-thirds of the crowd are completely dead on the ground. So gross. The performance finally ends when every single one on the when every single troll in the crowd has collapsed either from death or exhaustion. Only once the audience has worn itself out, the clowns call it quits. So this, this is the, the clown concert. Is that what I called it? This is the clown concert that Fozzer was was digging all of those, those culpits for. He's gonna need a lot more. They all start filing backstage, but for Marvis, who stops to take you down from the cross. Your beloved crown, clown cradles you in his arms like a pe- Like the pita? Like pita bread? Gently petting your blood splattered face. You hanging in there, fam? You tell him that yes, while continuing to play dead. You don't want to foil his roots. Okay, gravy. love a color scheme. He picks you back up and carries you off the stage. The clowns have a little green room set up by the backstage venue while they're all mixing and relaxing after the show. Nobody seems concerned to see Marvis carrying in a 90% dead alien, or particularly rattled after witnessing thousands of trolls savagely cannibalize each other either. Hey, you want a sandy? A what? A sando. You're sorry? Grub red. You say, yeah, sure. You're pretty hungry. Marvis drops you off on a couch, and you lounge indulgently as you wait for him to walk to the catering table and pick you something up. He's back quickly. Think you can move your arms or nothing, buddy? You say, not really. You're pretty sure all your bones are basically obliterated. Aw, that's rough. Sorry, man. Guess that's my fault. Lol. Okay. Say ah. Uh, you don't even question it. You obey him unthinkingly. Ah. Uh, you nearly choke when he kneels beside you and starts pressing broken off pieces of gross sandwich past your trembling lips. Tears well up in the corner of your eyes. How could someone like you be so lucky to touch and be held by the closest thing on this mortal plane to a god? And to shove your face right in his pit. You're sure there are thousands. Millions of trolls out there who would die to get into to get to experience anything like this. It's humbling. What did you do to deserve this? You're so weak from the concert that even moving your jaw is hard, and your star-stricken sobbing doesn't help either. Whenever a sloppy bit of grub paste filling dribbles down your chin, Marvis is right there to catch it. Shove it back into your eager maw. He makes unyielding eye contact with you as he allows you to ew, suck the maggoty meal from your fingers his fingers. You tell him he's beautiful. 
<laughs> a lot of people say that. I don't know about all that though. I'm just a humble rhyme juggler with a lot of cash money and 10 guys filming what I'm doing right now. When you're finished eating your sandwich, Marvis kindly wipes all the mess off your face. He's so gracious. You can't believe it. You're so glad that the camera crew is here to capture all of this so you can watch it and relive the experience of receiving his kindness again later. You guess you need an answer to the question. Marvis takes a moment to think on it. Ha! Huh. Well, I guess I saw the guy you was with. And I was like, yikes. What a sorry m You know that buddy be bad news fan, lol. What, Zebra? No way. Zebra's your friend. All your friends are cool. <laughs> Damn, cause that's raw. You okay? You sick? You real friends with that Inga Ding Dong? You know he blacklisted all the way out in Clown Town. What? Really? Why? Why? Please, tell me. He's just a social climber, man. That big blue buddy is a bad parasite. And he's blacklisted by all the clowns. He doesn't seem to know that. Well, we ain't about to go tell his chatty self. Gonna go write a wickedly nasty review about my business. So we be looking out for ourselves. Us clowns real close knit, you know? Taking care of each other and all that. You feel me? You know, if you think about it, clowns really are the most disprivileged socioeconomic class. You have thought about it, and it's making more and more sense recently. You love to engage in nuanced discourse with him about clown privilege, or the lack thereof. Yeah, cause, though we normally occupy a position of structural power in the institutional hierarchy of the human spectrum, we be sub, sub, we be subjugated into dampening our powers like no other. Because that agency of the Empress and her abysmal hier hierarchy. <laughs> no, the unimpeded strength of me and my sick, nasty buddies would easily unseat sea dwellers as a dominant caste. And if purple blood be objectively superior to violet in every metric of strength and power and influence despite chromatically preceding them, and the only reason we don't rise up and rip the fins off their slimy little faces in an eternity of religious persecution and cult, culturary Im, immutable precedent. What does that say about the validity of the rest of the system? You consider your mind thoroughly blown. Wow, this guy is incredibly woke and not the least bit racist at all. You're really inspired by how good he is at as both an artist and a man. <laughs> Damn straight. Maybe all this spectrum needs is a little chaos to think, shake things up. Really makes you think, you hear me? You do hear him. It makes so much sense. He makes so much sense. You make so much sense. Together. Marvis smiles at you as you hold his hands. You don't want to let go. You're afraid you'll never see him again if you do. You're not sure you can live like that. Maybe you can't always be by his side. But maybe sometimes. Occasionally. All you want to do is make a friend. Of course I'll be your buddy, buddy. Here, why don't you add me on Shitter? And next time I got a show, maybe I'll look... I'll hook you up with some wicked tickets. <laughs> the IPB. Rust Emperors represent. Make sure to check out my link in my bio merch if you're interested. Yes. The promise fills you with so much hope and light and joy. You can't believe it. You did it. You made the greatest, most ultimate friend of them all. Your shining light. Your reason for being. Marvis, the truest buddy you've ever had. True buds. <laughs> oh. You know, I said it couldn't get worse when 
Zebra was whispering into my ear, my ear and it was hot and sweaty and disgusting. It got worse. But now I have this beautiful clown as my friend. And that's really all that matters. That's really all that matters. All right, so that was such, such a ride, such a trip. I, I need to go lay down, but I can't. <laughs> Ugh, I need to go lay down. I need to eat my saw lamp. I'm just gonna lick it. Yeah, that's all. All right. So we made an amazing friend. We made this amazing friend, even though we shouldn't have. We did some horrible things. Puppy, you good? Hi, puppy. You're so cute. Hi, puppy. Hi, puppy. Hi, puppy. Boop. You're so cute. Aren't you? You're just the cutest. Yes, you're just the cutest. Thank you all so much for playing with me. This is Samantha Summers logging off. <laughs> Bye.